Today, I want to share three of my best instant traffic sources that are guaranteed to drive more visitors to your website for free. Also, when you stay until the end, I will give you a free traffic course as a bonus. Listen, before I start today's lesson, I really need to ask you something very important because as you probably know, I've been a pro blogger since 2004 and I would love to create a few step-by-step -step tutorials for you about blogging, but I don't know if you really want them. So if you do, please tell me in the comments and tell me what you need the most help with right now so I can go ahead and create those tutorials for you. Okay, so the total combined traffic of the traffic sources we're going to look at today comes to more than 18 million visitors every month. So I'm going to show you how to use these traffic sources. I'm going to give you the strategies that I have used to get the most traffic from each one. And really today, this is going to be a continuation of a previous tutorial that I showed you a few days ago on how to get traffic from Hacker News. And if you missed that lesson, then I'm going to give you a quick recap on how to make powerful content that gets people coming to your website. Plus, I'm going to show you how I have implemented it in the past. OK, so let's go to the computer and get started. So when it comes to creating powerful content that people will share, we can't just take existing content and then repurpose it or rehash it. What we need to do is uncover brand new information that has not really come to light before. And we use that to pull people to our websites. So if we go to Google, I'm going to show you how to find brand new information that has not been published or, or widely spread before. So this is going to build upon what we learned in a previous module where we were talking about Hacker News. We're going to follow the same principle of, of uncovering fresh information. So if we type something like if we go Freedom of Information Act, so F O I A request, this is going to change according to your country. So for me, it's giving me lots of UK information, UK websites, because the process is going to vary. So the UK allows us, it invites us, it really does want us to, it wants to make it easy to submit Freedom of Information Act requests. Now, what are Freedom of Information Act requests? Well, let's, let's hear it from Google itself. So a Freedom of Information Act request is a federal law that gives the public right to make requests for federal agency records. Now this for some reason, it's bringing back inf uh, information from the United States. Basically, it, it, it is a legal requirement for government and public bodies to share information with you. So they have a legal obligation to answer your questions. So, for example, if you want to know how much the BBC have spent on marketing in the last 12 months, they have to tell you that and that is actually a Freedom of Information Act request that I put into the BBC and I use that as a story to drive traffic to one of my websites. I've used this strategy to get enormous levels of traffic. Even the BBC itself have sent traffic to one of my websites. So I, I know firsthand how powerful this is and I used this strategy to get traffic from the sources we're going to look at today. Now, because the process is different depending on your country, I'll show you what is easy for the UK. Now, I assume that this website is available for people everywhere, not just the United K, uh, the United Kingdom. Sorry, I can't speak. I have not had enough coffee today. So the website that I'm talking about is whatdotheyknow.com. If you click on that, I covered this previously, but just to give you a really quick reca recap, <laughs> you can type in something that's of relevance to you. So it might be health. And now you're going to be able to change how this is structured. So you click on requests to see all requests. I suggest you go successful 
so you know um, which ones have got information. However, you can uncheck that if you just want to see up and coming requests. So maybe there's ones that you want to keep an eye on. So you could uh, plan plan it in advance. OK, so let's just go with successful for the moment. And then click filter. It's going to bring back lots and lots of data. All these um, successful freedom of information at requests made about health. Now you want to structure it by newest. So hopefully we're going to get some from maybe today or yesterday. So today is the 8th of Jan. And here we have one that was published today, 8th of Jan. This one was published yesterday, again, yesterday, yesterday. So there's loads of really new relevant data on here. So you can uh, drill in to each of these requests, see what people are asking and then see the response. Now, they will usually put it in a PDF download. So you'll be able to download that data and put it into your story because all this information, everything published here is now in the public domain. So let me just walk you through the process of actually doing one of these because I didn't cover that in the previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And this free, this site is free to use, by the way, anyone can sign up. But we have this button here. Make a request. Now think about who you want to get information from. So it could be maybe the BBC. Oops. BBC. Click search. And where are they at? Oh, they're down here. British Broadcasting Corporation. Click make a request. Give it a summary. So I think one of the very first Freedom of Information Act requests that I made, it was a very long time ago. It was probably about 10 years ago. I asked the BBC how much they were spending on digital marketing. Let's go. Let's do a follow up to that. So let's go. How much? Does the BBC spend on digital marketing? So now what I could do is create a new article that, that tracks how much they have spent over the last 10 years. So we know how much they spent 10 years ago, but we can comp compare that to how much they're spending now to see if there's been a significant increase or decrease. And that's a story. So. Let me find the one that I made 10 years ago so we can because that was successful. So this is what I submitted 10 years ago. When was it? 2nd of September 2010. OK, so let's do a follow up to this. This just this one alone got uh, hundreds of thousands of visitors from very little work, to be fair. So I asked them. I would like to know how much they spent between it was only like a 12 month period. So let's copy and paste that. Let's go back to the new one. Let's paste that in. So let's change the specific dates here. So let's say from 2015 to 2020, maybe. And let's update this a little bit because now we have Facebook. We've got a few other marketing channels, don't we? So let's put an email as well. Let's change the date here. So let's make that match. Now, what I want you to do, let's make it a race. What I want you to do is keep an eye on, on this, this request. When it comes back, take that story, run with it. Obviously, give me credit, credit profit copilot as the source, but you can use this in your own marketing to drive traffic to your website. So you can use this as the foundation of, uh, of a piece of content if you want to. I think that might be a good way to help you guys get more traffic. OK, so my freedom of information request has been sent. They've got 20 working days. And what tends to happen sometimes is they, they might bounce back with a little bit of a delay saying we're working on it. We just need more time to get the uh, to get the uh, information for you. And that's going to be perfectly acceptable. That's fine. So keep an eye on that if you, if you want to or at least get a story to work on. 
maybe it'll give you a head start. In 20 days time, you'll, you'll know that kind of guaranteed a story. And just in case you're wondering, this is what happened last time. Long time ago now, they got back to me within 24 hours. They said that it's going to be dealt with. And then in less than a month, they responded with this PDF document or I could view it as HTML. So let's click on the information that they gave me. And it turns out that they spent 1.4 million on digital display advertising and then 220,000 on on paid search marketing. That's an example of how to do a Freedom of Information Act request. That's going to give you a story to use maybe in, in 20 days time or whatever. So before we have a look at the traffic sources that we can use this with, I recommend that you get your own Freedom of Information Act requests done. So the information is uniquely yours. You are the source. However, if you don't want to do that and you want to be a bit lazy, then you can take other people's as long as you credit them as the original source. So let's go take a look at three of the traffic sources that we can use this with. So once we have a story ready, where do we put it? Which websites do we submit that content to? Let's validate the traffic stats and the traffic levels for the first one. So it's slash dot dot org. And where are we at? So global rank 21,000, country rank 6,000 and traffic overview. It consistently gets around 4 million visits a month. Pretty epic traffic levels there. So most of it comes from the United States, 61%, followed by Canada, UK, Australia and India. So that's slash dot dot org. Let's go start using it. Now, this has been around a long time, so I think this was formed around 1997, 1998. It's probably been around as long as I've been on the Internet learning digital marketing. So. It just really started off as a place for uh, the owner to rant about stuff. And that's all it was every day. He just rant and that's how it grew in popularity. So it really tapped into that, that controversial aspect that I've been talking about. So what I recommend you do is take the time to have a look at the type of content that is performing well on the front page. So this works in a similar way to Reddit and other websites where we have to upvote or downvote uh, in order to to uh, get results. So you'll see that there is heavy focus on tech related stories. So I'll show you how to use it, but you don't have to just focus on tech uh, content because if we have a look at these different sections, so at the top here we have a navigation bar. So if you click on stories, it's going to take you back to the front page. So if you, if you get lost, just go there. Fire hose. Here we have all. So you're going to see all the content that is being published, uh, submitted to the platform. So this section here, some of this stuff is just not going to get featured on the front page. I'll show you how to publish in a second. It's, it's pretty straightforward stuff, but then we have popular. then polls and deals and then their shop. So over here on the right hand side, if you click sign up, you'll be able to fill out that massive form and then create your account. I'm going to log into mine. So now we can start actually using the site to drive traffic. So what I want you to really notice here is when you submit content here, you're going to have a link to the the uh, contribution. So you're going to paste in a small piece of content here and you're going to link to your website. Notice that here we have a link to the original. So 
if you click that, it's going to take us to someone else's website. <laughs> someone else's website. It's the Wall Street Journal. But that could be a link to your website too. Also notice that we have links within the body here. And then we have these different icons. So this, these are like subsections in a way so we can apply filters to slash dot. So if we want to know more about the courts, we can click that. If we want to know about more about the almighty book, we can click that. And then that is the number of comments for this piece. So if we click that, we're going to get down to these comments. Now, interestingly, if you have something to contribute, maybe in an extra uh, resource, you can click post. If it will work for me today, so if we click post, we will get this uh, this comment field. Now we can post anonymously if we want to. We've got some settings to apply that uh, to, to that as well. So we can we can hide specific information about our account when we publish. So you can add a, a comment subject and then the comment itself, preview it and then post it and join in in the discussion. So how do we get our content onto slash dot dot org? Well, let's go here to the submit button. Give it a strong title. Now, what I would recommend you do is study what is happening on the website. Look at the headlines that are, get, that are getting good results, good traction. And then put in the body of your story here. You can include links if you want to. And it actually gives you some suggestions. So take the time to read that. Apply formatting if you need to, to help it maybe stand out a little bit. Also paste in probably the most important aspect is the URL. And then you can choose to post it under your account or anonymously, then click preview and then go ahead and submit it. As soon as you do that, it will go into the all section. Let's go there where people can upvote or downvote. So when we upvote, we need to give it a reason. So why, why might someone upvote this? So this could be interesting. And now we've voted for that piece of content to, to increase its chance of hitting the front page where most of the traffic is. Okay. So that's slash dot dot org. Let's check out the next website which is FARC.com. I've got enormous amounts of traffic from FARC over the years. It really is a, a massive powerhouse of traffic. And we can see that the global rank is 7,000 country rank, United States, 1,000, almost 2,000. But if we have a look at the traffic overview, I mean, it's getting double what slash dot gets with 8 million visitors a month. It's crazy high. If we go down to traffic by country, United States, 83% of the traffic, such profitable traffic. Now getting on the front page of FARC, which we'll talk about in a second, it's not, it's not as easy as slash dot. I'll tell you more about that in a second, but we're also getting traffic from Canada, UK, Australia, and Netherlands. So let's go check out FARC.com. Now this is, again, it's like another news aggregator of sorts, but it's curated by human editors. So, so there's no real algorithm at work here. Basically a team of editors will choose what type of content they believe should hit the front page. Now FARC.com is one of, again, it's been around for a long time. I think um, I discovered it in maybe 2000. So I think it had been around for around a year by then. Basically, the guy who started it, 
Drew Curtis had this email list where he would email interesting stories to his friends and his family, his family, excuse me. And then he thought, well, let's just put this online. So instead of emailing these news links out every day, he'll just post them on a website. And that's how FARC.com was born. Now, when you have a look at the site, you're going to see this big submit a link button. Now, you do need to create an account in order to post here, but it's free. Now, the sign up link is a little bit hidden. They, they really do make you work for this. So the actual link, let me show you. So this is the sign up form and you can find it when you go to fark.com forward slash sign up or one word slash sign up. OK, now you're going to have to use a real email address for this. So no, none of those fake ones and Take the time to fill this out because when you submit content, so when you go to this link submission thingy, as it's called, you know, the editors are going to have a look at your submission. So they're going to look at your profile too. Now, not only will those editors see your submission, this is really important because every submission will or can be seen by other FARC members, the paying members. So really, you're going to get traffic in two ways from FARC. First of all, you're going to get traffic from the front page. But secondly, you're going to get traffic from the paying members, because here it outright tells you that less than 5% of submissions are handpicked for FARC's main page. So it's going to give you a way to increase your chance of being posted. So if you click read this, it's going to give you a bunch of points. Really honestly go through this. If you want, I want you to get as much traffic as possible. I honestly do. So really take this to heart. Now I can read this out for you, but I don't think any, anyone wants that. So take the time to go through it in your own time and the big takeaway from this is make it funny. So even if the story itself isn't funny, write a funny headline. If you have a look at the front page, you know, the, these are kind of almost like uh, sarcastic or snarky, you know. So it's probably better that you don't just copy and paste your existing headline, write a brand new one specifically for FARC. And you'll notice that they're sending a lot of traffic to uh, big websites. But look at this, because here they have some guy. So that means it's a website that is not wired or it's not the BBC or the Mail Online. It's not the New York Times. It's just some somebody's website they're small time so it says some guy now if we have a look at the link submission form you have source some guy so leave that as is so if if you're not a massive website that you know people would generally recognize leave it as some guy but choose the right category you got a few different options here, so they're not just looking for uh, a specific type of news. They want to embrace a whole different bunch of, of topics from sport to politics to entertainment to business. It's going to be welcome here as long as the headline is pretty catchy and it stands out. And then put in the URL, add your tagline. So if we have a look at the front page, you'll see that the, te the tagline is actually the headline here. So that's what that means. And then choose the topic. If you have a look at all these different sections, lots to choose from. So choose the one that, that is most accurate. And notice that these are really about 
values or feelings. So instead of having um, specific niches listed, they're talking like cool or creepy or interesting or follow up. So choose whichever one is relevant and then leave that, leave the source as default, preview it and then FARC it. So that one is FARC.com. Let's go to the next one on my list, which is dig.com. So again, I've got a lot of traffic from hitting the front page of dig. It's, it's not as powerful as it used to be, but it is still a massive traffic source because you can see that the global rank is 12,000 country rank USA 3000 and it is always hitting at least 6 million visitors a month and it seems to be increasing and 74% of that traffic comes from the United States followed by Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand. So in terms of uh, ad revenue, CPM, Dig is going to make you earn, you know, a fairly high CPM rate uh, if you use it right. So let's go check it out. It is dig.com. And I think this was founded uh, in maybe 2005, 2004, around that time. I first became aware of this in around... 2006, 2007 maybe, because other people were posting my content to dig and that's how, that's how it became on my radar because I was already hitting the front page because, uh, you know, I was looking at Google Analytics and I saw dig.com, never heard of it before, went and had a look and lo and behold, my audience at the time were, were very active and, uh, they were really doing a lot of the marketing for me, which, you know, obviously amazed to experience. I mean, it's so grateful for that. So they were posting content for me without me asking them to. And it was managing to hit the front page of Dig and Reddit and a bunch of other websites. So let's start using this because while it was at one point in time quite political, it's not as much as it used to be. So we have these sections at the top here. So if you're interested in or, or if you're creating content about any of these topics, you're probably going to do OK here as long as you have a strong headline and the, the content itself is really good. So. Take a look at what is hitting the front page. So your mission really is, like we spoke previously, is to uncover new information, is to get some something newsworthy, something shareable. So let's start using it because we have this sign in uh, button. If you click that, you can sign in with Twitter, Facebook or Google. Now, I'm just going to go with Google. What I'm going to do actually is I'm not going to sign into my regular account. I'm going to create a brand new one because we have this really nice feature here. So I'm just going to sign in uh, or create a brand new account. And I'm going to go with Google. There we go. OK. So when you sign in, things look pretty much the same. But if we go over to my account, click that. It's going to list all the links that you have submitted. And the first thing it's going to ask you to do is submit a new link. So go ahead, click that. And now we can choose which section we would like to post to. So if our content is relevant to Bitcoin or if it's a long read, if it's about marketing, if if it's uh, current events or news, if it's political, you get the idea. So choose one of these. Let's say I want to post something relevant to marketing. We have this join 2,500 other members. I'm going to click on that. We'll 
confirm that I've joined this section. So think of this as, as a community within Dig. So similar to Reddit has subreddits, we have these, these uh, spaces on Dig. And it will show us the best performing content. Now, I'm not really sure how the algorithm works. Now, we should be able to, to uh, play around with things a little bit here because I say this piece of content was submitted 54 minutes ago and it hasn't had any upvotes. So let's give that an upvote. There you go. So that increases the, its chance of hitting the front page. So let's take a look at what type of content in this section is doing pretty well. So we can see that in terms of upvotes, this one has got 30 upvotes. However, it was posted four weeks ago. Now this one posted a month ago, again, four weeks, had 11. So imagine if you get on the front page of this section, imagine how much traffic you're going to get. So you don't even need to hit the front page. So once you know, when, well, once you have an idea of the kind of thing that is going to work, click this submit link uh, button there. Now you can add in a link to your website or wherever else. Give it a story title. That's your headline. Think about the content that we've just looked at. Think about the, the emotional impact of the headline. So we're not just going for search engine traffic here. We're also going for that, that human element because that's what's going to get you the upvotes. Now, Dig gives us another option here, Story Kicker. In journalism, a, a kicker is, it's usually like an unexpected angle. So you've heard the phrase, the real kicker is. So think about that and add something a little bit unexpected in here. And then put in your uh, description. It says short and playful description. I like that. Um, so maybe write something original just for dig instead of copying and pasting from your article, just, uh, you know, give dig something a little bit unique, then add an image. Images are very important because that's going to increase your click through rate. It's going to help you get more votes. So absolutely add an image. And then we have these optional details. Check this out. I really like this because you can now go into more detail about the story and you can give three important details, one per line, and then you can link to a social media post. So not only can you link to your own website, but you can also link to a follow up piece or, or something relevant on social media. So you can uh, hit two different angles here, hit two different uh, ways of, of marketing your content. Now these optional details are not necessary, but maybe, maybe you will want to use them and, and it might help your chance of getting more exposure when you're happy with all that. Go ahead, click submit. And then if we go back to your account, you will see your, uh, your most recent submitted links there. Now, if you are serious about making money on the internet, you're going to need more web traffic. So I will give you the traffic methods that I never share on YouTube or anywhere else. You can get them all for free when you go to profitcopilot.com slash traffic. And I'll put a link to that in the description. And if you found today's lesson valuable, give it a thumbs up below, subscribe to the channel too, hit that little notification bell. So you never miss an update from me. And I will hopefully see you again in a couple of days time. Take care.